Mr. Jeter, District 1. Here. Mr. Tipton, District 2. Here. Mr. Heron, District 3. Here. Mr. Bricky, District 4. Here. Mr. Mann, District 5. Here. Ms. Hood, District 6. Here. Ms. Addington at large. Here. Thank you, ma'am. Next item is to approve the agenda. It's going to be amended. So, Ms. Starnes, if you would, then we will vote on the amended agenda. We need to remove item number seven, the Spearhead Trails presentation. And in place of that, please add the opioid resolution. And I also have a couple things that I could have done under miscellaneous, but since we're amending, uh, let's go ahead and add them in. That would be item 11B, Baker Tilly. Uh, item 11C, Sheriff's Request. And item 11D, Inmate Holding. Second one was the sheriff. Sheriff's request, yes. Okay. All right. Anything else? That's the only changes that I have. Okay. With that, we need a motion to approve the amenda of the amended agenda. We have a motion. I'll so make a motion, Mr. Chairman. Right. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, motion. We have a second. I'll second. You have a second. Any discussion? All favor of saying aye. 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 Opposed, motion carried. Next item is to approve the minutes for January the 4th, 2023. Had a chance to look at it. We need a motion to approve the minutes as presented. So moved. Right, Ms. Anthony made a motion. Do we have a second? Second. second. Mr. Bricky, second. Any discussion? All favor of saying aye. 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 Opposed, motion carried. Next item is the assessed expression period. Let me read this short statement. We'll get right into that. Assistant expression period is upon the meeting when anyone who wishes to address the board or staff may do so. If you wish to speak, please come to the podium and state your name, where you're from in the county, and or what organization you represent. The board may or may not respond to anything you say, but we will take everything you say into account when making future decisions. Please keep your comments concise and business-like. If no one has signed up to speak, have any stars. They have not. We have no particular order. We just ask that you take turns to speak your business. Any action will be considered after we consider well, after we close this expression. With that, anyone wish to speak, we may do so at this time. Good morning. Good morning. Do I need to state my name? You do. Just for the record. <laughs> Snow Flat Road, Gate City, Virginia. Well, I came down last Monday because I thought we were meeting on the first Wednesday of the month. Anyway, <laughs> Sorry. I'm back and uh, whenever will our next meeting be March the 1st? March 1st. Okay. The reason we did that, we were in Richmond last week. Well, did you find out anything? We did. We'll talk about it in a few minutes. Okay. All right. Well, I have, I, that's what I've been. I've been on the phone to uh, Haley, uh, Terry Kilgore's secretary, and she called me back, but I wasn't home, but she finally did get back with me. But she said that Terry was supposed to be meeting with VDOT that Wednesday morning, but she said she probably, he probably wouldn't know anything for me to come to the meeting. So, um, and the gravel, well, and I've called VDOT several times. They did scrape the road. The first I called in a, a load of gravel on January the 5th, and they gave me a ticket number, but never did get anything. So then I, when I called back, they give me another ticket. I said, well, what, what happened to that ticket number, you know, that you gave me last week? She said, well, we'll have to void that one and give you a new one. And I said, well, we didn't get the gravel. And then they called me, uh, I called them back yesterday, and I said, well, we got a, a maybe a wheelbarrow load of gravel. And it, they, they always put it, and it's feed on. They're not putting it where, you know, it, it needs it everywhere. But they spots, different spots that really needed. And when I called them yesterday, I told them about uh, uh, 45 Snowflake Road, 4500 Snowflake Road, days of kind of wet weather spring there, and it stays muddy even not now. You know, the road is not muddy or dusty, but that little spot, you go through that and it'll fold mud all over your vehicle. And the ditches, the, they haven't never done anything at Lars driveway. And the ditches, the ditch at my mom's driveway, 
and she's caught too for gravel, but she hadn't, she said, I haven't seen a load of gravel, but the wheelbarrow that we got, you know, was put down below Jimmy Darty's place. And like I say, I've just took, took notes and I've called Terry Kilgore's secretary and I get a hold of her secretary, she even gives a message too. Let's see. And so I called yesterday and got a hold of his secretary, but she didn't get back with me. But I didn't find out anything whenever the, the meeting for VDOT that Terry had. I, she hadn't found out anything yet. And now, if you can let me know what you found out. What do folks say is fresh and don't leave? And we'll, we'll talk about it. See if anybody wants to speak, and, but we'll ask you to. So don't leave yet. Okay. All right. Thank you. All. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Anyone else wishing to speak? <clears throat> I guess we could have kept you up here. Nobody was going to speak. If you want to come back, Peggy, you can. And we'll, that way you can come back up here if you want to. Sorry, I thought somebody might want to talk, but come back. If you would. That way you can look at us. Uh, all right. All right. <laughs> that meeting did happen. We were there uh, when that meeting happened in his office. And uh, they were taking notes uh, about everything that we are concerned. I have heard some good news already. I can't say what it is right now, but I have heard some good news from that, that V dollars responded to the, in, a, in a way that's gonna be pretty good. Uh, but to be specific, I, right now I can't, but I think, uh, and I'm gonna tell you, people coming to these meetings and you calling helps. A lot of people don't want to, they want somebody else to do it for them. You're not, you're doing it yourself. You're making the calls and I commend you for that. That's why when you come back, I wanted to say that to you so you'll know that what you're doing is helping. <coughs> And uh, so anyway, we were there. How many was in that meeting? Do you remember? It was 10 or 12, Freda? Yeah, it was a room full. It was a room full. It wasn't just two or three. And it was the people that can make a difference. But they were there. We were there too. Michael, uh, uh, Mr. Bricky was there, myself, and Mr. Tipton was there. And so it, uh, they're listening. Now, to get that VDOT meeting, I didn't know it would happen. I, and when, when Ms. Starnes first said, you know, if we were getting them and they came, that's never, that's never happened before. So to get them there at his office that morning, on Wednesday morning, was a, was a plus. Well, see, and that's what I told, pass, would pass along. Well, I, I told Haley, I said, well, I, VDOT don't know where the, the roads, I said, they need to turn that over to the Board of Supervisors because they know the roads. All right. So. I drove that road back a few months ago and uh, it, it, it hit back in the late summer and hit, uh, which I don't drive that road regularly, but I know it, it does need work, it does. And, yeah. Uh, and it is, and Jeremy, you keep it on the six-year plan. That's, that's, it's in the room. <laughs> and I hope that y'all probably do away with that six-year plan, because it, to get. That's all the weapon we have right now to use. We don't have anything else to use. And so the real rustic program and six-year plan, I mean, that's, that's just, that's just what we have now to deal with. And uh, so, well, for an example, Russell County, they have all their roads on six-year plan, which really is, is, that's the wrong way to do it. But we do have you know, what we have, and, and hopefully there'll be more funding coming where we do more to these roads. Okay. And we have another plan, too, we, with some stuff that we're going to, maybe some way to uh, have a little skin in the game to maybe encourage them to do a little bit more than what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And we'll we'll talk about that later. We can't talk about it right now, but we'll later that we maybe can do that. Well, see, now that was like uh, on, a, on a Thursday. It was 42 degrees. V-Dot went up uh, on the dirt road with 
for Richmond than any I've been on. I've been on every trip since I've been on the board. And I think we got more done, we talked to more people, we got more feedback than we've ever gotten, and especially from that meeting that morning. Curry was there, Pegan was there, Wamper came in, Dean Lynch came in. Uh, all, there was seven or eight, I think, from the highway department, two from Bristol, the rest from on up to the state. And we aired a lot of stuff with them. We went over practically everything I've heard in the past three years. And, uh, and hopefully, well, I think, I think we've already got some word that some things are going to be done. But you're exactly right. I've told the VDOT people here it has to start in Richmond. We can't, we can't do much here, but it has to start in Richmond and come down. But I feel good about it. It, it won't be the next week or the next month. It'll be, you know, how it works. I've turned in things three years ago that I reminded them of in Richmond last week. So just be patient and, and pray keep letting your voice be heard. <laughs> Uh, Let your voice be heard. Okay. And what he said, the people, <coughs> Dean Lynch was there, and he's the executive director of uh, BACO, which is the Virginia Association of Counties. To get him in there, I mean, but he's an OKC board, but he, he was there. And the Senator Pillion was there. So we had a room full of people that can't make a difference. Mm -hmm. But it starts right where you're standing, and people come, and I, and I, I know we, sometimes I don't want to hear certain people complain, but sometimes it's very constructive, and it has been with you all. Well, I will continue to call yep. Terry Kilgore's office and, and then uh, uh, another okay. question, right. I forgot to mention this, uh, I, I also told her about, we supported that um, Affordable Energy Act, you know, about AEP, and they were supposed <coughs> to meet on that, but now I didn't hear anything back on that. Did you all, did they discuss that or anything? Did not. Well, that whole thing, I got that, that thing in the mail too. That is about going green, that's all that's about. Oh. It, I mean, it's, it, if you look at those people that, that sent that, that's what, that's what it's about. They're saying that going green is cheaper, and it's not. It's, you, and you, you're going to, I mean, your electric rates are skyrocketing, it's going to be even worse if they try to do that. <coughs> Let me give you, and I know this is not what we're about here. I'm on a board at the clinic in Dungannon. We're putting in a solar system. It's $259,000. What's costing? We're putting fifty-seven thousand in. The government's putting two hundred and two thousand. It will. It will. We'll, we'll save a thousand a month. It's seventy-five percent. So it's going to cost two hundred fifty-nine thousand. That's two hundred fifty-nine months just to get our money back. How many years that is? Over twenty years. So it's. Uh, and that's a seventy-five percent. So that whole thing. I looked at that. And I looked those people up, and they. It's a go green to get rid of fossil fuels. What that's about. They. They think it's cheaper, but it's not. Mm -hmm. So we need to just don't mention that. I, I didn't. When I mean, you look these people up and see what their real agenda is, you'll see that it's about going green and getting rid of fossil fuel. Oh. That's when you're really going to pay. And you, these rolling blackouts they had uh, when they had the coal spell at Christmas. I know we're not about that here, but anyway, uh, it's just it's going green right now. One day it may be, but right now it is the ex most expensive way to go. Mm -hmm. But you would say, you know, my concern is, you know, the people that's on fixed income, I agree. their light bills are going up. I mean, and I see it all the time on Facebook. People are putting on, they tag me in it, how much theirs has gone up, and it's it's, it's ridiculous what their what their, their electric rates has gone up. Mm -hmm. I get tagged in a lot of that stuff, so I can see it. Not that nothing we can do here, but mm -hmm. we're with you on it. Okay. Thank you for coming. Thank you. See you next time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I know we get more stuff there than sometimes we need to, but uh, anyway, hopefully that will help. Next item is the opioid resolution and Ms. Starr, you do it. You have the resolution in your packet. The resolution is for the Board of Supervisors to approve the county's participation in a proposed settlement of opioid-related claims against Teva, Allergan, Walmart, Walgreens, CVS, and their related corporate entities and directing the county attorney and or the county's outside counsel to execute the documents necessary for our partic participation in the settlements. And I don't know the dollar amount that would be back to the county exactly, but you see the amount that they're looking at for is the overall scheme of things, but anyway. This uh, is different than the one we done several years ago. Yes, correct. This is a different settlement. Any other thoughts or comments to Ms. Starks? 
All right, Miss Resolution, uh, we'll go with it, and I think we should, but I'll put it up there for a motion to approve this resolution. Do we have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the resolution. All right. Mr. Bricky made a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. Who? Me. Okay. Y'all sound the same, so if I'm out right here, don't do that. <laughs> Miss Agden, second. Any discussion? All favor, vote saying aye. 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 Opposed, motion carried. Next item is item eight. Ms. Kim Smith from Heart of Appalachian. Update, so if you would, ma'am. Good morning. Thank you all for having me this morning. I really appreciate it. My name is Kim Smith, and I'm currently serving as the Executive Director for Heart of Appalachia. So I just want to give you all some brief updates this morning about uh, what the organization has been doing. Um, so in 2022, um, we, we take a big focus. I'm, I'm a very data-driven uh, marketing person, so I really like to be able to show hard numbers as to what we have done. And especially, you know, receiving some state funding and receiving funding from the localities, I feel like I need to be able to show you all exactly what we do with the money. So um, in 2022, we increased our Appalachian Back Roads website traffic by 21% over 2021, which uh, 2021 was actually a very good year for visitation to the region because of Following COVID, people wanted to be outdoors. They wanted to be in less crowded areas. So a 21% increase over 2021 was, was really an impressive number. Um, we're seeing a trend uh, toward people wanting to go out <coughs> and, and, and experience the outdoor recreation. Our website traffic this year alone, just in January, is already up over 40% over the same period of time in 2022. So it's just continuing to grow and snowball. Um, on, on social media, our, our reach increased by 230% on Appalachian Backroads. And for those of you all who aren't familiar, Appalachian Backroads is basically just a network of mapped out motorcycle and sports car routes. And we package those in a way that uh, allows us to market them directly to people who own motorcycles or sports cars. And uh, we, we really dial in on the locations that have the most interest. And uh, we track the conversions on the site, which we measure by map requests. Um, just in 2022 alone, we had, um, it, it said we distributed direct mail nearly 80,000 pieces of print material. By the end of December, that actually hit over 81,000. So that's 81,000 people who were interested enough in coming to our region to actually request material. So we're really excited about that. Um, the Heart of Appalachia website also increased uh, about 20% last year, and uh, the uh, Facebook page increased by 117%. So again, showcasing just how interested people are in coming to our region. On the left side of your packet, um, in 2022, we contracted a third party organization out of Tennessee to do an economic impact study on the, on the Heart of Appalachia region, which is uh, seven westernmost counties from Tazewell, to, uh, Lee County and the overall impact of traveler spending in the region was $253 million with uh, if you look at the page behind that were 28.7 million of that being in Stock County alone so those are very very positive numbers um, we're really looking forward to this year we're taking um, a, a more digital approach to marketing um, and really working on a marketing plan for this coming year um, you know, I've been writing grants with Virginia Tourism and VCA to try to get some more money to market the region. Um, Heart of Appalachia has historically been funded mostly with state funds. Um, we also get DMME or Department of Energy civil penalties. And of course, with the decline of coal, those, those penalties have continued to decline. So we're more and more happy to reach out to the localities for help. And uh, we, we really hope that Scott County will be a partner moving forward. So if you all have any questions for me, my contact information is here. And on the left side, you have a business card. Um, and this is specifically for our tourism related businesses. If you have someone in your district that you think may not be listed on our website, feel free to give them this card and uh, they, can, they can either scan the QR code or go to the website and submit their business. And that just enables them, it's, it's a free service for us to market all of those businesses. And we do that through our website and through Virginia Tourism's website and also through our social media. But I thank you all for letting me present to you this morning and uh, I wish you all a great day. Thank you. Thank Good you. presentation. Thank, thank you, you.
The next item is the personnel policy update. Uh, start with Ms. Uh, uh, <laughs> hey, when you're old, you can do that. You can pick right out and you can get the name. Mm, uh, no. Go ahead. These are uh, updates out in, uh, about medical marijuana changes in the code uh, that we need to incorporate into the personnel policy. Probably not anything we're going to run into, but still, it needs yeah. to be. I look at it. Look good to me. Mm -hmm. I'm saying that. So. All right. Any discussion? You're on the board. A lot we need to approve uh, this personnel policy updates. If we have a motion to do so, we will. We have a motion. I'll make the motion that we. Yeah. Mr. Acton made a motion. Do we have a second? No, second. Mr. Herron, second. Any discussion? All favor of saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Item 10 is permit refund, Ms. Starnes. I have that information on your tablet. Uh, Mr. Gilmer has requested um, that you consider doing a permit refund for Mr. Mark Sampson at 162 Warm Springs Road in Weber City. Um, he is not going to be. Um, using the zoning permit that he requested. The fee is $70. Okay. Is that okay to do that silent time? Yes. All righty. Uh, any questions and comments? If not, we need a motion to approve this refund of $70. I'll make the motion, Mr. Chairman. Mr. made a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. Mr. Tipton, second. Any discussion? All favor of saying aye. 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 Opposed, motion carried. Uh, next item, item 11, Virginia Department of Transportation letter. Get a chance to look at that, Ms. Starnes. This was a request at the last board meeting, mm -hmm. and those are on your tablet for you to review. Uh, there are letters to Delegate Kilgore and Senator uh. Pillion with uh, Ms. Crowder <coughs> at the VDOT Bristol District copied. Um, if this is I had shared with uh, Mr. Mann to see if this was the right direction. If you all have any changes you would like to make, we can do that. These letters have not been sent out. They're just here for your um, approval or change today. Okay. I thought the letter looked good. I don't know if you all thought you had a chance to look at it, and you can chime in here or uh, we entertain a motion to approve to send it as presented. I'll make the motion. Okay. I'll second. All right, Mr. Herman made a motion. Mr. Tipton second. Any other discussion? All favor of say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. 11B. Ms. Starnes. 11B is Baker Tilly. Um, you have a handout in your packet that we will discuss. They are doing our compensation study that you approved back several months ago. They need a list of 10 peer organizations that you want um, comparables for. Um, they have suggested a list of 15. The first 11 uh, were on a previous study from 2005 and then uh, some counties of approximate size have been added 12 through 15. So we need to narrow this list down to 10 and approve that where they can continue working on the study. To narrow it down to 10. To 10, yes. <coughs> Where is Page County and Orange County? Orange County would be the Northern Virginia. Orange County uh -huh. is between uh, Charlottesville and okay. Washington, maybe. Yeah, to me, that that would be one to get rid of. Yeah, what about Page County? Is it up same? same? It's not as far, no. Not as far. Um, I was thinking town of Abington. I don't think that's really a comparable no, for a county, a town. Okay, okay. Does it have to be in Virginia? It doesn't. Mm -hmm. oh, so you're Crystal, Page sorry. County is next to Shenandoah and Rockingham. It's on the 81 quarter. Okay. Page is kind of comparable to this. I would you think mean, so too. Yeah. The last five. 
We delete the last five. Is what? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're not highlighted on here. It's just now. Well, the twelve through fifteen were new additions, so that's why they're a different okay. color. So um, Orange County is near Charlottesville and Culpeper. So, so we're only deleting one. We're deleting five. Yep, so those, those you you think being on the county level would still give us good. I mean, are they going to be right because they're comparable yeah. size. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, but that one, so, since that is you know more <coughs> next to oh, bigger yeah. metropolitan areas, yeah. um, that might be a good one to take off if you wanted to take off Orange. Did you think Town of Abington to take that? Well, off? I, I don't know when you said that. I, I did you said that it may be different but but we what what I think about the town of Abingdon someone that lived here in Scott County could travel to Abingdon to work okay that's that's sort of how I and you know that that's a good thing we've got some about some one in Tennessee or two in Tennessee because you got the city of Kingsport so you know that's that's a uh, we're having to compete against that Oh, that's that's my my thought. Maybe Orange County. If that's if that's the location. Is everybody good with that one to take yeah, off? Okay, that's one. We need four more. Oh, oh. <laughs> we're gonna take five off. Oh, okay. So you took off. Orange is the only thing right now. Orange is the only one. Okay. The city of Bristol, Tennessee, would it been better for Bristol, Virginia? Okay. I mean, since this is income based, right? This is kind of like looking at. I think we need to take into consideration too what the like the median incomes are for the those counties, maybe. I don't know if that's right or not. I mean, maybe. So where it's comparable. I think that's how they came up with the Is list. That how they came up with it. Yeah. Okay. So we need to come up with five. Is yeah. Right? Four more. Eliminate five. <coughs> yeah. So let's let's try to. I think Russell County should be on there. Yes. Lee County should be on there. Lee County should be on there. Washington Wise County. County should be Wise on there. County. Washington County. And Kingsport. <coughs> Washington, both Tennessee and Virginia. <laughs> oh. Oh, okay. No, you could take off Washington County, Tennessee. Yeah. Yeah, because that's Johnson City. Am, am, am I looking at that right, though? I mean, according to where people could, could travel, I mean, that's comp where Kingsport would be competition for us to be able to hire somebody. Do we need, I mean, am I looking at that right? And it says selection of comparable peers should be based on similarity in size, such as number of employees, population served, and revenue, geography, services provided, industry, and competition. Of course, King, Kingsport's not going to be comparative in size. I mean, right, but they would be competition for They'd employees. Competition. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> Is that Green County, Tennessee? No, no, it's Virginia. It's Virginia. Hopefully, have a It is part of Charlottesville, Virginia metropolitan area. That's what it says on here. So, you want to take that one off too? Which one? Green, number 13. Green County. Since it's near Charlottesville. Yeah, I don't think yeah. so. It's, and so, with these right here, their size, there'd be a lot of things different, I would imagine. Um, I think Blue Manor County. Yeah, I'll take Green County. Where is it looking? Okay. Fluvanna is. Yeah, Eastern. Eastern. Yeah. It's more. Home of the Flying Flucos. It is. That's what I was going to say. I remember that <laughs> yeah, from, I remember the, too. from the ball game. Yep. Um, I don't know what a Fluco is, but you know, yeah, I don't that either. was their. Uh, it is. It's like see. a governor. It's Ted. Yeah. It looks what like it is. Charlottesville area. I think Jeremy wants to leave it because they, maybe. our employees <laughs> could be. It looks well, I mean, 
but but we only have, to have five. We could cut Abby and all. People would be more apt to go to Kingsport. We keep ten. We need, we need to, to get rid of five counties. That's well, too far north. We keep this. I'm all probably keep Abby. 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 I think that one would be. Prince Edward is uh, very similar in size to us, so that's why they've got it on, got those four on the bottom there. They're comparable to they population. Are. Okay, so how about the Green County, Fluvanna, and Appomattox? Fluvanna, I wouldn't think. I think we need to remove that one. I don't like them, do you? <laughs> is everybody okay with <laughs> that one? I'm teasing. They beat them, the, the uh, Twin Springs won that game, didn't they, when they played them? No. I think, I think okay, we've removed orange and flu banana. <laughs> Got a ball game here, for you. How about green county? Green. You want green removed as well? Green, flu banana, and then let's look at Appomattox. Which floor we got rid of orange, uh, green, and two banks? Florida, green, county, and orange. I would think Appomattox. You rid of Appomattox? Yes. I don't think so. Is that five for you? That's four. Yep. <coughs> I got orange, green, two banks, and Appomattox. What was the fifth one? Prince Edward. Prince Edward. What about Washington County, Tennessee? I thought we talked about leaving the Prince Edward earlier. Mm. Prince Edward's still on there. Yeah, we left still on there. Uh, Washington County, Tennessee's fine with me. Well, I would say either because get Because their rid population's 133,000. Yeah. Get rid of Johnson City or Washington County, get rid of one of them. So. Well, Appomattox County has a population of 16,000. So it's not, and they're, I mean, even though it is next to Lynchburg, up in that area, it's still, I would think similar, maybe, or comparable. I guess that's the right word. Which one? Appomattox. Appomattox. I mean, their median household income looks like Look fifty-five thousand. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it seems similar, in my opinion. Did you recommend Abingdon three one? I recommended taking Abingdon off because they're a town. One one but thing about Appomattox, though, it, it's their population is on a steady incline. Ours is on a steady decline. Abingdon is a town. That's the only town on there. All right, let's go. So what do we decide? We still need one more. Yeah. So what we got? Orange County, Green County, Havana, and which other one? Appomattox. Appomattox. Need one more. Washington County, Tennessee. So y'all still okay with Appomattox? That's what we were just talking about, right? Did Jeremy mention it's on a steady increase? Ours is the population and ours decreasing. But it's just, I mean, I, I don't know. It's All right. Y'all go to Orange, Washington County, Tennessee, uh, Green, Cleveland, and Appomattox, that'd be fine. Green, Which county, Tennessee? Washington County. <coughs> Keep Johnson City, we get rid of Washington County, Tennessee. That'd be fine. Orange, Washington County, Tennessee, Green, Louisiana, and Appalachia. Is everybody okay with that? Yeah. Give me the vote on this, please. Yes, please. Uh, right, everybody good with that? We need a motion to get rid of those 10 on the list of 15 you have. Do you have a motion? So we, Mr. Chairman. Tip to make a motion. Do we have a second? All seconds. Give a second. All favor of saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Right. The next item we added was a sheriff's request, and that's in your packet as well. 
Uh, this request has stemmed from conversations that we had on Friday um, with the judge, the sheriff's office, the <coughs> attorney's office. <clears throat> it kind of ties into requests for 11D. Um, a cargo container has been requested by the sheriff's office to be able to move their files from the old jail um, and have a place to store those securely on county property. They have done some quotes um, for like a Connex box storage container with the cheapest one being $5,250. And they were requesting, since this is not in their budget and it's been um, something that's come up this fiscal year after the budget was approved um, to see if the board would provide funding for that box so that we could get those files moved out of the courthouse and proceed with the demolition of those buildings. Is that a one-time payment? It's a one-time thing, yes. Can we use ARPA funds for that? We could, or you could use contingency, either one. How are we going to do this? 41000 okay. That's for a year? No, that's just one-time purchase. One time. Oh, we purchased by it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, it's a purchase. Um, Here I'll stop you on the board, so that's something we need to do. So here I'll stop. I'll make a motion we do it. That's fine. You want to work the money to come from? How much are the funds we got? A lot. About 380. Which do you suggest? Contingency. I'll second that motion. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> all right. We have a motion that Mr. Brick is second. Come from a contingency fund, $5,250. Uh, all in favor of said aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carried. Inmate holding. Okay. So. Can we put them in this box? We can buy them. <laughs> so, oh, sorry. for the past year, we have had discussions on what to do with the inmates, um, since we moved them out of the old jail facility, they have been staying in the courthouse in the hallway in the offices there off the judges chambers. Um, some days, a couple times a month, they have 20 plus inmates that are in that area and it's very crowded. So after the meeting uh, on Friday, it was suggested that we maybe get um, a contractor's trailer or some kind of storage temporary storage facility uh, that we could put the inmates in um, while the sheriff's office was at the green cube place on Monday they can um, do a custom like connex box for inmate holding they could put you just draw it out the way you want it they could put the doors in bathrooms heat and air and they could put it on a chassis where we could park it where we needed to and move it as needed. Um, Bill, unfortunately, is um, out sick yesterday and today, so he was working on that. So I don't have a price yet. We may have to do a special fitted to our needs in two weeks. So the time for construction would be wow. pretty quick if we did the green solution. I don't have any idea of the price, so I really don't know what ask to make um, it is something that we really need to do because we need to get those inmates in a different location than <coughs> outside the courthouse so i really don't have um, any more information than that um, i have no idea on the cost at this point do you have a range at all i'm thinking maybe 20 to thirty thousand. that's a purchase Not that would be a purchase, purchase. but that's just ballpark if one of these planes fifty two hundred dollars I'm thinking you know twenty to thirty for one that's custom for our needs what would we do with it when it's no longer needed right we could sell it uh, is there could we use it some aspect of, uh, we could look at that and see you know we could probably redo it the inside probably be used for somewhere yeah. 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 well I think about even for the county I mean for tools and maintenance tools or something like that. Yeah. Right, now. right. If you wanted to do something up to 
say thirty thousand and tell me how you want that funded you know we could go that route once we get the prices i can of course um share that information with you or we can come back once we have uh, more details on how that's looking that probably would need to come from arpa funds if we could yeah yes what will that will it just have a plug in like plugging the camper in or something yeah they said it would be a 110 on the just one ten. Mm -hmm. wow Of course, if we go over 30000 it's going to have to be sealed bid anyway. So we'll just have to do our procurement procedures and make sure all of that's done correctly. But it's ever how you all you know, want to handle. So we're going to have to have one. Yep. So, yeah. I mean, I think we'll just have to do it regardless of Just go ahead it's and my get, opinion. get the bids. Okay. Yeah, I agree. Well, if it's below 30,000, it don't have to get the bid, she said. It don't have to. Yeah, right. It's under 30,000. Yeah, we'll have to do process, but it just won't be sealed bid. Right, right, right. right. Okay. Got So we, we entertain a motion and for it to come from the ARPA funds up to 30,000. And then if not, if it goes over, we have to have a special call meeting to, right. to approve it. Is everybody okay with that? Uh, yes. Okay. All right, so we need a motion to approve that up to 30,000 to come from the ARPA funds. Do we have a motion? I'll so, make a motion. All right, Mr. Turner made a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. Tip and second, any discussion? All favor of saying aye. 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 Opposed? Well, let me tell you something. The judges have really been patient with us and working with us, trying to get uh, some things done out there. And, uh, you know, we went through all that with that uh, bids and stuff we had on, on the mostly contractor stuff for the courthouse. And we got other plans that's going to work, I think, with the, the purchase of the Daisy Pempton building. So, anyway, a lot is happening with this. They've been very patient with us, and I do, you know, I appreciate them doing that. Hey. Have we got ideas where we're going to put both of these things? Um, yes, no. the sheriff's office will be in a secure location, and then um, we've measured and we can fit this right behind the old library, the judge's house, because it's not very wide, and there's other buildings. We were concerned about once that um, demolition project starts yeah. with that being so close, but the, it's not going to be any closer to the old jail than the courthouse is, or the building right next door. No. So. I know Wise County just took down their old jail and it stayed right in that footprint. So hopefully, you know, we'll be okay with just putting it right there. And it looks like water and sewer hookup is pretty close to that location as well, right behind the old library. Okay. All right. A lot, a lot to do here today. Is that it? That's all I have. Okay. Next item is Ms. Vickers, bookkeeping. The same. Please appropriate $8,155.20 to Sheriff's Office Repair and Maintenance of Vehicles, 31200-6009, for an insurance claim received and deposited at the Treasurer's Office. And appropriate $21,820 to Sheriff's Vehicle Replacement, 31200-8001, for an insurance claim received. And appropriate $13,209. $14.42 to Circuit Court Clerks Technology Trust Fund, Capital Outlay Office Equipment, 29-216-55-8102 for monies received. And appropriate $324.72 to Sheriff's Department Travel Conferences, 31200-5540 for reimbursement received. Appropriate $1,803.55 to Circuit Court Clerks Travel Training, 21600-5540 for reimbursement received. Appropriate $1,647.56 to Commonwealth Attorneys Conference Travel, 22100-5510 for reimbursement received. And appropriate $26 <coughs> to State Paid Contributions, 32200-5645 from Virginia Department of Fire Programs Fund FY 2023. Disbursement received and deposited at Treasurer's Office, and that's all the appropriations. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, need a motion to approve the appropriations as described by Ms. Vickers. Do we have a motion? I make a motion, Mr. Chairman. Right. Mr. Hood made a motion. Do we have a second? No, sir. Do you have a second? Any discussion? All favor of saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. On the grants. Uh, please accept Sheriff's Office TCJS 2023 Operation Ceasefire <coughs> Grant number 2023 <coughs> OCGP grant. If accepted, please establish the following expense codes for 31305, 1105 for grant salaries, 2100 employers FICA, 2210 employers VRS, 2300 employers share health insurance, 2400 employers life insurance, 
600 unemployment insurance, 2720 workers comp, and 6001 for office supplies. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Is a motion to uh, approve the grants as described, uh, Ms. Ms. Vickers? We have a motion. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Tipton made a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Brief you second. Any discussion? All favor of saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you, ma'am. Next item is appointments. Uh, we'll say if you would, Ms. Tanner. Yeah, Do you have any nomination for the Cricket Road? I'll nominate John Kill. Any other nominations? I want the motion nomination seats for vote by acclamation. Okay. Do we have a second? I'll second. Mr. Jeter, second. All in favor of saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carried. Ms. Tanner. You have uh, one appointment to the Southwest Regional Recreation Authority. Eugene McClellan has been serving. He did reapply. Any, any nomination for the Southwest Regional Recreation Authority? I'll nominate Mr. McClellan. Okay, any other nominations? I'm a, I'm a nomination to cease. Okay, we have a motion to nominate to cease, but by acclamation, do we have a second? I'll second. Mr. Tipton, second. All in favor of saying aye. 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 Opposed? You like that, man? As soon as time to say. Oh, she was. <laughs> Every time I was going, I was. <laughs> I'll look at your face. I see that. I'll stop. <laughs> Y'all do good. Tickled. We can thank you. Though. We really do. Well, thank you for saying that. You've done good with it. Thank you. You've done good with it. County Attorney Adams, Ms. Kegley. I don't have anything today. Okay. Any, anything for her? Any questions or anything? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank after claims is fifteen million three hundred forty five thousand six hundred fifty dollars and thirty eight cents and you can see by your comparison chart that's about double where it was this time last year but don't get too excited uh, the school system uh, <laughs> still has to draw down their funds that's seven point two million dollars so then you'll be in line where you were last year um, some larger claims that we'll discuss um, we had early sets um, for the ATL money for the fire departments, you'll see that on the very back sheet, AEP um, as well. And your total early claims totaled $467,827.74. Current claims, um, the big one, of course, is the regional jail quarterly uh, for the third quarter. That was $723,569.97. Yeah. Um, audit cost $46,250 for Boston Tucker. And um, fire departments um, that got their final allocation for the year were Dungannon, Fort Blackmore, and Weber City. Um, that does finalize uh, fire and EMS payments for the year for their regular allocations. Uh, we had Rio Grande Fence Company um, that was for the Sheriff's Impound lot that was paid for with ARPA funding $22,297. And if you see any others that you have questions about, just let me know. Um, total claims, current claims was $1,132,962.24 for a total that needs to be approved today, $1,600,789.98. So all the fire departments just pulled all their money. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, we had the three, uh, Dungan and Fort Blackmore and Weber City were the only three remaining. <coughs> so that was a big, big total. So this right here would be after claims? The claims are already out of that, yes. <laughs> They've only pulled two hundred and fifty thousand. So I'm not sure. I don't know. I was talking to Miss Starnes about that. I'm, I'm surprised they haven't needed that money. So they haven't pulled it down yet. So I don't know. It's just very unusual. It's never happened before that I can remember that they would be delayed this long with pulling money down. And they're still operating. So I don't know. 
I don't know. I wish this money was in an investment pool so we draw an interest off of it. I don't know which it was. It would help a lot if we did that, but uh, anyway, I pull it down as needed. But that's what we hear about. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you said that low. All right. Any other discussion on uh, before we vote on paying the bills? If not, entertain a motion to, to pay it. And we have a motion. I'll make the motion we pay the bills. <laughs> I'll wait for you. All right. <laughs> All right. Ms. Adam made a motion. Do we have a second? Thank you. I'll I don't need to ignore you. I really don't. All right. <coughs> Is there a second? Any other discussion? I'm afraid about saying aye. Aye. Opposed? They saved carry? you the 1.6 million, I noticed. Yeah. yeah. That's on you now. Yeah, that's on me. Yeah. <laughs> right. you know, we, we may get a little out here, but we like to enjoy what we do and we sort of you know, go after each other a little bit. We have fun doing it, but it's uh, just part of it. So, yeah, thank you all. Ms. Lanes. Um, just one thing. I wanted to give you an update on the smart scale projects. Uh, number four scoring was Kingsport MPO's application uh, for the first part of the Weber City Corridor from the Tennessee State Line to the bridge. That total was $9,191,094 and our, that was a Kingsport MPO um, project with uh, Scott County as a partner. Um, and then number eight was our US 23 um, from the bridge to Addington Oil uh, changes with Chapel Street and some other railroad crossings through there. That application was $7,389,395. Um, both of those were in the the 14 that was recommended for funding. Uh, those will be finalized in June at the Commonwealth Transportation Board meeting. So uh, it looks like both of our projects will be funded for this last round of Smart Scale. So that's uh, very good news and a lot of money that would be coming for uh, road improvements for the county. And I just wanted to give you that update and I'll keep you posted as we move along once those are formally finalized. That's in June at meeting? I believe June or July. You called that the Commonwealth what? Commonwealth Transportation Board, CTB. I've gone to a lot of those. And uh, so I'll try to go to this one too if you want to go. It's interesting and you hear a lot of stuff. You hear a lot of stuff from all the, all the county, uh, all the other counties, what their, their, their thinking stuff are too. So we got time to, just, to think about it if we need to attend that. And I'll probably go. I have the floor and I don't mind doing it again. All right, that's just for information on correct? Yes, it is. Okay. Anything else? That's all I have. Well, we're moving quick. It's almost like 9 30 yet, but we'll get done up here. Mr. Francis is going to go first. He is? Well, I want John first. Mm -hmm. I'm teasing. <laughs> morning. Good morning. Mr. Francis. I'm usually brief. But I'll be very brief this morning. I know I just came to the board there in November. Usually December or January aren't the most exciting ones for recreation and golf, but I do have a few <laughs> things to right. hit on here quickly. Uh, <coughs> Royal Park, I'm just going to real quick say, you know, we've done a lot of recent improvements there. I've talked about, so it's in great shape and uh, it's in a good spot. So thanks for all the support you've had there with Keith Moore Park. Uh, you've heard me talk about Dovefield uh, Community Park. It's one we're starting to now turn some attention to and resources to. Uh, we've already done a few small projects there. Uh, I'm working with Tucker Bigley. He's the president of the Rye Cove Bully Baseball Softball. Uh, I want to thank him. He's kind of been my eyes and ears out there. I'm spread thin sometimes and I don't really get to go out there as much as I really honestly should. <coughs> And with him, he's kind of let me know, hey, here's what we need to do, and we're getting some things rolling there. So uh, a lot of planned stuff, in the <coughs> day, just some little improvements that we needed to do. So next year or two, probably going to be focusing a lot of attention on Duffield Community Park. Uh, I will be requesting some additional funding in the budget upcoming for Duffield Community Park for those, but it's nothing uh, big. It's just small, small amounts that they need to kind of bring that park up to, up to where it needs to be. So. Uh, right now, registration is underway for our 2023 Youth Basketball League. That's usually about 100 to 125 kids. Uh, deadline's Friday. Anybody's watching our list and get your kids signed up. Uh, that league begins the end of February. We'll start practicing, and then the games will run through the middle of uh, April. So that's really all I've got on the rec side of things. Uh, down here on the golf course side, I've been talking about our revenue. Right now, we're at an over 3% increase over the same time last year. I know that number's 
getting smaller, but we've been doing so well, that's kind of expected. Uh, I think if we can maintain or increase, I mean, those numbers are probably not, you know, I, I think I came before you the past, past few times, and there were some big, big increases, you know, but we're still staying at an increase over that. Uh, as you know, the last two or three years, we've been on a really positive revenue path there, so I appreciate, I think there's some things I want to mention here that's held that you all help support, so um, just try to keep that going. I think we're in a good position right there to keep that momentum going, so. Uh, something that's kind of helping that, that I want to talk about in a different way the rental room. Uh, maybe this is anecdotal. It seems like that room's been rented as much or more than it ever has. Um, it's almost every weekend at least one. I know this weekend's three rentals, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, that helps revenue. It's not a big number. We keep that very affordable for the citizens. Uh, but really, I want to point out that's a, that's a big, probably something we probably is underrated. We offer that to the, the citizens. Scott came there's reunion, reunions, parties, weddings. Um, and very much, I would imagine, the most affordable facility for that for people. Um, it, it's very affordable, and it's used a lot, so. Um, going down the road, we're probably going to look at doing some repair, some improvements there. I'll get with Bill with a couple of works. Um, uh, it's in good shape now. We did some improvements right when I first came on with, as an assistant or skip. Uh, but we're probably looking at coming up. We probably did need to do a few things to remain competitive with the surrounding venues but uh, you know we got people that rent that thing every every single year for a reunion so um, just really happy we offer that to the citizens. I really like that place. Yes. I've gone to some events there and I think it's very nice. <coughs> Pretty view, I, see, I, I see it every day I probably take it for granted but it's you know people come up there they're like blown away by the view in the mm -hmm. fall and the spring. It's beautiful. It's it's, mm -hmm. it's nice up there. I, you know, I take it for granted I walk out that door every day and see that. But, uh, <laughs> You know, something that even for years I've thought about with that what you have up there. If we ever build something there that would uh, for people to have their little conventions or whatever, people to come and uh, and make it something maybe bigger and better. And I don't know if that could ever happen, but I've often thought it's a perfect spot to do something bigger than what's there. We, you know, we are limited in space. There's probably some things we could do. I don't know how big we could go, but you know. Like it, in a perfect world, maybe you get big enough to maybe host a prom or right. a smaller expo convention right. thing. Maybe but now we are space limited right. parking and building wise. Yeah. But um, we, we've had some uh, what I guess we call like boutique shows there. But I mean, it's been probably pretty crowded. But people have had like a little shop, right. like stop and shop things where they set up. I guess almost like a mm -hmm. small shop, you mm -hmm. know, with different uh, vendors and stuff. They, we've had that before, so we've had a variety of things up there. But, well, I've attended stuff at Meta View and the golfing thing, everybody, and they get into that. And plus, you, you've got everything there in place now to, to get people to come and to have those. And they'll, they'll do their golf thing too, you know, while they're coming to some yeah. kind of, a, you know, whatever they would have a convention or whatever. But just something, I don't know, I don't feel it every day. We're always short of money, of course, to do things, but still, it's something. It always comes down to money at the end. It does. It does but, but, but it's, it, it would, I, I agree. And, um, you know, maybe down the road we can look at some type of what we could possibly do within the, within yeah. the scope of something reasonable, you know. But, uh, yeah. Anyway, just sometimes. I know about you talked before, time. and I have that on my agenda, on my calendar to keep looking into as far as expansion right. and that kind of thing. So, um, I keep mentioning Scott's service, and we'll brag on them again. We continue to work with them. I probably follow them <laughs> a lot, but they've been great. Um, you know, there's always times they do big, big projects for us, but uh, you know, they did a lot of just basic everyday things for us. Uh, this past week they came up and picked up sticks and limbs and branches. You would think after so many years of eventually storm and knock them all down that uh, heavy storm, it's, I'll drive up the hill and number three, I'll go and there's just branches everywhere. So it, it allows our staff, you know, we're, we're a small staff, it allows them to focus on the golf course and things they need to. And I just really want to, you know, that's been a great program for us personally. Uh, they helped us out with all kinds of things in there. So, uh, Big shout to Scott Service again. And lastly, down here, you know, we are doing our spring, uh, winter and spring equipment maintenance. We have a lot of equipment up there. We have a lot of high dollar equipment. Uh, you know, this time of year we're changing all the oil, bearings, grease belts, that kind of thing. Um, I wouldn't call us experts, but we're definitely serviceable mechanics. Uh, we do try to do almost all of our repairs and maintenance work. Uh, I would say, I would say 95. Very rarely do we have to outsource repairs and maintenance, and that's a good thing. I know right now we're working on a cable for a uh, fairway mower, and I think just to get the vendor, just to get him there is $600, the mechanic, and, you know, 
we may <coughs> it may take us a half a day or a day or two, but we can usually get it and save that. So uh, we do try to do all that maintenance ourselves. And, and lastly, um, you know, we will be needing new golf carts coming up probably next year or two. I have presented that to the Capital Improvement Committee. Um, we're on a different trend. Other courses mostly do every three to four years and get a new fleet. We go about eight, nine, ten, and it's worked out for us well. Uh, we're getting to that point again. Uh, but you know, the golf carts are for us. If you look at our revenue, look, we have it broken down into items. It, golf course, our golf cart rental is our highest revenue item. So it's important to have you know functioning, nice, <coughs> working the entire fleet. You know, even if one or two or three are down, it, it doesn't affect your tournaments and that kind of thing. Plays in the summer. Uh, but you know, our revenue's been up, plays been up. Uh, I want to thank you all. You know, we really have good equipment. Um, our staff works hard, extremely hard in the summer, but honestly, I think over the last five to ten years, some of that revenue increase is tied to some of the equipment and some of the agricultural <coughs> things we've done there. The courses, you know, I keep saying it, but I keep hearing it from longtime members. It's in excellent shape. Um, people that have come that haven't been there in 10, 12, 15 years always say, wow, this looks different. That's the first thing. I say, wow, this is different. And a lot of that is to, I mean, our staff is doing great, but it's some of that equipment. You've got to have that golf equipment that's very specific to those roles. And uh, I thank you all, y'all support us on that. And I really think that's been a big driver of this. It's, it's you know, if someone comes there for the first time, it's in great shape, they come back. Uh, I know we're probably going to see an influx this year from, uh, I think, <coughs> Silver Lake is closed. And that was a very comfortable course. It was not a whole course close to us. So we're probably going to, I'm already here, people coming like, well, I'm going to start coming here. I'm going to start, you know, I'm going to join there, you know. So, uh, you want to have that place top notch when they come. That's when they, you know, you know sign up for a tournament, sign up for a membership. Uh, so I think I think that is def definitely directly related to that revenue trend. So thank you, I appreciate it. You that. have a, I mean, do you folks working uh, as far as building a comp time? Do y'all are you managing that pretty good to keep them getting? I mean, I see, you know, we're managing. Pretty uh, angry. No, we we do we have a lot of comp. Time. I know you manage, but I want you know I know it's hard yeah, to get the I mean, time. Right now they need. Is they use a lot, but you know, it's 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 always it's like a seesaw game. As soon as we get down to this time of year, about February, March, what I would call a manageable level, then April, May, June, because they're working you know, Saturday, Sunday, usually 10, 12 hours. That's where it, it, it just goes back up again. Um, it's always a, it, it, I feel like we never gain a lot of ground. It feels like it's always a up down up down system kind of. Right? I know we've talked about. I mean, of course, it would be money like a part time closer position and that would probably help some um, but obviously that cost you know I don't know what you gain on you know that would be something we could look at but you know you're obviously putting money in that position right. um, and you've got money on the other end too so um, okay. well just a quick something I was at a cold conference once had some people there from China mm -hmm. they were all playing golf they didn't want to play golf they just wanted to ride around the golf cart that's all they wanted to do was drive a golf cart that was it they didn't want to play golf so you said people will do that and generally we say yeah go check it out if you had some of it <laughs> so maybe what y'all do people just want to come ride the golf cart you know? well during the high school golf season that's like that, I mean, that's a big revenue driver so we have those golf teams there you know we don't charge them right. but every parent grandparent cart 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 yeah, I mean, yeah. we, we've, we've run out of carts at tournaments Oh, yeah, they, yeah, they want to follow the kid, you know, they do pay a fee for that. So, yeah. uh, anyway, they do spectate. Now, we, we got people that want to spectate their tournaments, but we don't have enough carts for that. So, I right. just want to watch people play. Now, the high school tournaments, yeah, we, we rent the carts out for the parents and, and right. grandparents. So. All right. Could I mention one thing? Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. <clears throat> There's one thing I want to bring up, and I think it's be a good time. While we were in Richmond, uh, we mentioned to several people. Natural Tunnel State Park and the pool. Pam, you will be interested in this. I don't know if you've got information yet or not, but they closed three state pools in Virginia, and uh, ours was not open last summer. And uh, Natural Tunnel has been ranked number one on their priority list to come in and refurbish, rebuild, whatever they've got planned. But the bad news we got is that the cost of that went from two million to four million dollars. Now, I'm, I made the statement, I think Terry Kilgore did, that you, you can take Tucker and his dad and go on any mountain in Scott County and build a pool for less than $4 million. <laughs> so it, it's on Terry's radar, P, and knows about it. And uh, if you have any influence or Pam, you know people that you run into, mention that. 
Yes, we sir. need that back for our local people, our surrounding counties, and for tourism. Yep. Yep. That, that you mentioned, that I've gotten calls and people say, "Hey, is it you know coming back and coming back?" I'm like, you know, I, I refer them to the natural total, but so it, there's definitely an interest need for that service here, and I, I, I've been getting those calls and inquiries. So you're definitely right. I'll, 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 I'll I think our church work. kids there's always packed up in place was full. Of people. I mean, there's a kid for trips. Yeah. Uh, Sure There's always a lot of people there. I mean, I've never seen it. There. Yeah, There's always cool. yeah. And I know the same thing with sometimes parks and rent. You know, I know that it, you know, does that pool make a profit? It may not. It probably not. Pools are tremendous costs, but you know, you, you, you do need to factor in the travel, the gas, the, the trip. I mean, there, there's there's a lot of other factors tied in, and it's a service to the community. It is. It is. Um, for, for various reasons, for, for education, for trips, for, for memories, you know. So I, I agree. I've, got, I've gotten quite a few calls this spring about it. So. I've gotten inquiries about it also. But it's hard to believe that it's been, what, three? Is it, will this be the third year? It's the second or third? Yeah, it's hard to believe. Yeah. <laughs> Got your membership at the golf course up down. We're up. Uh, we're at the. Uh, you know, I, not, I would say we're never. We're not near where. When I say the heyday, back in the nineties, early nineties, mid nineties, that's when golf courses were. But when they were building them, it seems like everywhere. Um, we're not there. We're probably halfway to there. But there was a time we were a fifth of that. So we're definitely. We're probably double what we were the last. Well, I won't say bad. The last time we were low numbers, we we're probably double our low numbers. So we're in a good spot yeah. there. Yeah. And it keeps we we offer specials. It's coming up. We always offer spring specials. Membership always jumps up. You know. um, we offer junior memberships at a very competitive rate for the kids that are still in school. Um, extremely competitive because we really want. I mean, that's going to be your future golfers. We try to kind of get them in early and keep them. So, uh, but yeah, memberships are up 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 over the last. Uh, well, especially the last five years, the last seven years, we've, we've, we've slowly ticked up. So, And like I said, I do look for us to gain, I'm not going to say a huge number, but with Silver Lake closed, it wouldn't shock me for us to gain 10 or 12, 15, from, just from that situation. So. Okay. Good presentation. All right, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you all letting me go before. All right. <laughs> this will be the fourth year the pool's been closed. The fourth year? Well, yeah, because well. it's... Been closed since COVID 2020. Wow. Mr. Wow. Good morning. How are y'all done? Good. 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 Thank you for the opportunity to present. I'll start with the uh, Riverside. Appreciate uh, all the support for you, Dr. Melvin. We had good meetings in uh, Richmond. Uh, some of y'all went to that with uh, people that. Or basically, I knew a lot of people, you know, like DHCD. We got a new director. We were able to meet with uh, him, with, uh, of course, also Virginia Tourism uh, Corporation and also the Virginia Economic Development Partnership. And they expected probably about 10 people in that vein, and they ended up being there was a room full. I, I didn't count them. There's probably 30 in there. But uh, I think it's important that they know about Scott County, know where we are and know what we're doing, know our priorities, and I appreciate the, the ones that attended those meetings there. So I'll start talking about the Riverside development. Uh, earlier last year, Bards actually updated our master plan. Our original master plan did not really tell the story of uh, what we were trying to do there. It's always mixed use. So this kind of tells that uh, the commercial up front and the green space, and then you would have some residential in there as well. So from there, the next one, then the, the announcement back November 2nd uh, was related to a housing <coughs> opportunity. So since that announcement, we've had uh, multiple meetings electronically with DHCD and Landstar, of course, and uh, Virginia Housing Authority. Virginia Housing Authority is supposed to visit in the next two weeks uh, their director and look at the sites, uh, not only in uh, Scott County, but also look at Wise County and Big Stone Gap as well while he's here. And then Land, Landstar continues to work on the final design. They're supposed to present something to Virginia House and Authority soon for them to take a look at as well. So they're still working on that. So that's what their uh, intent is, is of course to build the townhomes, 
below the uh, tip below the former Teletech building, T Tech building, and then moved to single family homes later on. But the townhomes will be the initial start of the housing. And then you can see the uh, they left the green space, which is down close to the river on this plan as well. And you'll have some a commercial component up front. They have, uh, of course, uh, along with uh, focus on housing, uh, like they told you that they were focused, focused on the mixed use and commercial. And uh, I think he's already reached out to at least four potential commercial uh, uh, properties or, or uh, companies that, that they know. DMME Devil's Bathtub Project, and of course this is the Ambler Funds. The total project or total budget for that was $353,430.18. And we advertised the road, the, uh, I mean the parking lot, that was the old parking lot that everybody used that had the ruts in and everything. That was before the county did the parking lot, a nice parking lot down there. So we were advertising to help Jefferson National Forest upgrade that as a part of this project. So that's, that's what we advertised and it was over budget. So we're still working on that value engineering on that. The, they have started working on the trail, uh, the trail portion of that. 50% of the remaining work on the trail will be around the stream bed. So they've got to wait till the water's a little lower. So it'll be either spring or summer of this year and they can get back in there and it'll take them about two months to get that finished. And then they have the, the last, uh, in November, December, they did close the mine portal and the surrounding the sound surrounding area has been reclaimed and that's part of the project too that's why we were able to get the handler funds it's uh, because there was an old uh, coal mine back in there a long time ago nicholsville farmer market uh, we did uh, farmers market apply for the twenty-five thousand acres. we had that and the board of supervisors uh, you all approved the arpa funds we have got an estimate waiting on the uh, to meet with them. Uh, uh, Jeremy and I have been trying to drive that and talk to them about that. So uh, we'll, we've got uh, Jeff Kegley has an, an estimate. We've got to meet with that group and then we'll proceed to the next step. Hopefully we can get that under construction So, <coughs> Oh, sorry, too quick. Another thing we worked on last year was the TVA Workforce Invest. We applied for a grant through TVA, and they, that's in partnership with Mountain Empire Community College and the EDA. Total project cost was $54,114. That's supporting manufacturing skills training in Duffield. Uh, one of those things that uh, trying to uh, increase the knowledge of the teachers in the region about the industry that we have in, in Duffield. So they had a summer institute for teachers. So that was where we highlighted. They, they met in Duffield. They toured the Duffield plants and we'll continue that outreach to our uh, local teachers in Scott County as well. And we provided them a lunch for that summer institute. We'll uh, continue to work on this this year. Uh, and as we've got to have this money expanded by the end of this year, we'll work with the TVA folks and Mountain Empire on doing other events. Small business support, uh, we focus on existing industry and uh, that's very important. And just a little highlight on, ex on existing industry. Since 1999, uh, that's back, I think, as far as I can recall, as far as records that we have, uh, BFP and Temper have uh, expanded five times. That's a lot. If you think about uh, BFP, has invested over 90 million in Scott County. I mean, I mean Tibbers invested not over 90 million, and then you got BFP that's continuing to invest there too. Five expansions for BFP, three expansions for Komatsu, formerly Joey Mining Machinery. And when you look at those, they have invested heavily in our county, and uh, we, we need to tr continue to treat them as uh, great uh, corporate citizens, and that's what we try to do. <coughs> we also support the uh, small businesses as well. And how do we do that? By Rural Business Development Grant. Uh, we've been successful in applying to Rural Development three different times to, to refund this because all of our funds have been depleted two times. This last time we got more money to put in that so we can loan out that money to businesses. So we can loan up, up to 25000 to a small business at a, uh, it's a really good rate. So uh, we, uh, we work with Small Business Development Center and 
if you have a somebody that wants to start a business, that's a good place for them to start because their services are free. They do a business plan for them for free, work with them on that. Then they come to us, talk about a loan, or talk to VC about a seed capital grant. So uh, that's a great a positive thing for our county. We also uh, uh, applied for and received that AVID, and again, we support the business and industry by partnering with the Chamber and Business and Industry Appreciation events. Business and Industry Appreciation Month is in May, so hopefully I'll, I'll get a resolution back to you all sometime to support a resolution to support our business and industry, and we'll have an event with the Chamber hopefully this year on that. Our RBEG loan uh, program, or RBDG, I've got to change that E, it's a Rural Business Development Grant now. It used to be Rural Business Enterprise Grant. So we have 36 loans approved to date, over $650,900 that have been uh, approved by the EDA. And that attributes to 81 employees, five tourism related, 22 retail, nine support businesses. <coughs> Yes, uh, sometimes businesses don't make it, we know that. Sometimes they last 10 years, sometimes they last 15 years, but it's important to have that fund so we can reinvest in other businesses that want to come in here. So uh, a lot of uh, small businesses have, uh, have received grant funding as well. Here's some ribbon cuttings that we had last year and some pictures, some of y'all attended those. And then we also have the seed capital grant program to the region through Virginia Coville League Dr. Development Authority. 15 Scott County businesses have received grants since 2017 for a total of 145,000 uh, for their businesses. And they could be up to 10,000. It could have been a 5,000 grant, 8,000, 9,000, but it's up to 10,000. Local and regional grants, y'all invested too, and I appreciate still the investment y'all made during COVID to our small businesses, and that's the total is about a million dollars between what Scott County had, has given to the small businesses and what the region has given to the businesses. All throughout the county. And we continue to market our assets. Of course, the uh, Duffield Technology Park, uh, Duffield Industrial Park, and then you also have the uh, uh, Crooked Road Tech Center that's uh, right above that. That's, a, that's an asset that we have uh, available space that we, we pushed that to the BDP last week in our meetings that we get space available and would like uh, new technology or that type of business in the, in the facility as well. We also uh, help, well, we don't own the mine, we help them market that. And we also help market the Riverside and work with the uh, developer on the, the new developer on the Riverside. Any questions? Yeah, how about the uh, bays at uh, Riverside? Have y'all talked to them any more about selling those? We have talked to them. Uh, we have met with the individual and uh, we've got, uh, yeah, we haven't got a final on that yet. Uh, we've got to meet with them again. Try to work something out. Yeah. John, the money that we've paid back for the mountaintop timber in Dungannon, 250000 where's that stand now? I mean, has all that ended, or I know we, they went through bankruptcy, but any chance of us getting any of that money back from them? Uh, I think they started paying some of that. We need uh, probably need to direct to Commonwealth Attorney to see where they are on the process. I think that he was uh, had to go back to court for something. I have heard a lot of failings against all one where that shook out, you never hear anything about it. So I know it's nothing with you, but I was wondering. Well, I'm expecting that 250000 back if we could ever get it back. Probably not, but he, anyway. he agreed to that. Yeah, I know. It's hard to get blood out of a turnip. Right. He owes that to the county and then to the state, too. That same amount. Where will we stand as far as the pecking order, I guess? Is the, I know probably the banks get their money first, or whatever. I don't know where we're on the, as far as. Uh, Get anything back now as far as the the banks on the loans they sell that to the sale it, it would be the county i mean whatever they agree to the latest yeah it would go to the <laughs> state and that's yeah. that's what it would be yeah. all right any questions for mr kilgore what about the tail tape bill we got any prospects for it we, we'll work with the developer on that to send he's, he's helping us on that as well and hopefully we'll get somebody in to go in there and there may be other plans, higher, higher, better use of that building than that we're aware of that he goes on. Any 
questions? Mr. Kilgore, any other? Thank you. Rich, my last week, appreciate you going. John, uh, everybody knows him, and uh, we're blessed to have him, so we thank you for being a part of all that, and uh, anyway, I do appreciate it. All right. Well, I do. Uh, one, two things. Is the leadership program, you know, anybody wants to take the Scott Kelly? And I missed that. Penny would kill me if I missed that. <laughs> <laughs> Scott Kelly leadership uh, classes are starting. If you want to register for that or have anybody that wants to register for that, please do, th do so through Penny and Scott County Chamber. And there's scholarship. I, I think it would be beneficial for any, if you're serving on any board, to, to, to attend the leadership class. And if y'all want to attend one of y'all, it it's great. It's a great learning experience. And also, uh, uh, the Scott County Chamber annual dinner is back, and it's March the 10th, Friday, March the 10th, and it'll be at the Korean Tech School. And please uh, sign up for that. Yeah, I talk to Penny about that. Yeah. Two things, so I right. didn't miss it. <laughs> you got it. You're, in. You're out of trouble now. Penny would be proud of you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, we're down to item number 17. Comments, requests, recommendations from the board. Anyone here? Mr. Jerry, you have any comments? We well, do have three out of the closed session, so, but then we'll go to the closed session. If you have Fred and I went to a regional jail meeting yesterday, and uh, looks like the inmate count is down from 2,200 to 1,500. Is that right, Frida? Some of them. If y'all got any questions on regional jail, uh, Frida Lynch one. <laughs> <laughs> we are getting some reimbursement probably, from the, what we paid them. Did you, did you tell me that? Or is it Cost going down or something. I don't remember what you said. Yeah, our estimated budget will be reduced for next year based on our inmate count. But it's just a draft. We'll get a final number a little bit later. Think about the inmate count going down, but their cost is the same as for I mean, feed them probably is not as much, but still they got to maintain and staff and everything. So. You know what the yeah. rates are now? Uh, next year it's going to be 40 some dollars a day. Yeah, because like Danny said, the fixed costs stay the same. Then make that we've got a, a reg regional authority wide, then make counts down for everybody. So, you know, those fixed costs stay the same. So that boosts up your per diem rate. Mm -hmm. What they showed us yesterday, that they have a big turnover in people. I mean, they're really? hired and they're gone, and then some of them rehired. So wow. a big list of uh, employees turnover. Wow. Anything else? Thank staff for all the job they do. Okay. I'll second that motion. <laughs> Mr. Tipp? Uh, three things, probably. I want to thank uh, Frida. I know the pitcher's been back there for probably, what, a couple of months now? When I said something about it, she said, well, you want to request it. So um, <laughs> that was, that's good. So, <clears throat> and I guess just thinking about change that from board from board to board I guess that type of thing so um, I, I've already talked to me dot about this but if you free if you just want to make a note of it the Ann good Cooper highway um, <clears throat> uh, it's in pretty bad shape right now potholes and so forth and they're complaining about it um, the other thing that I would like to mention is <clears throat> the Veterans Memorial Tank. I'd just like for y'all to think about this. Um, it's faded. Um, there's some work that may need to be done on the, on the wheels. And I don't want to go into that right now. But it's, um, it's going to cost us quite a bit. And so the, fun, uh, the American Legion will be doing a lot of fundraising and things like that, but we might want to ask if you want to help. I'm not going to throw out any type of a figure. I mean, it'd just be something that the county might be able to help with later. Um, <coughs> and the, th the last thing is, <clears throat> I'm just going to ask the question on the lottery fund and the opioid um, fund should we not have a committee to help with that uh, as we've done with the ARPA funds and things like that. Uh, um, I know the opioid it would probably be pretty much directed to what it needs to go to and how it's to be used and things like that. Yes. There's a lot of 
those strings with the opioid. Right. And um, the county administrators have met with Behavioral Health and Lena Wisco um, about a, a large project with those funds. So there will be more coming right. on that. Right. And there is a committee set up for um, the Regional Improvement Committee funds from the casino. The, this board okay. has already set that up. Okay, gotcha. Okay. Yeah, that's Jeremy and Danny. <coughs> and we've already met once. Okay. All right, that answered my question. All right. Thank you. Is that it? Mr. Herring? No, I'm good. Mr. Bricking? Um, no, I don't have anything. It's a pleasure to serve with all of you. And thanks to the Sheriff's Department. You keep coming, okay? Yeah, appreciate that. Yep. <coughs> Miss Hood? I don't have anything. I'm just having a time of my life. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can tell you, you get that smile, so that's good. <laughs> All right, Miss Abby. Um, do we have any news on the treasurer's report for the? Yes, I have that. Oh, fantastic! Um, good job. As of Monday, the sixth, they have collected eleven thousand six hundred ninety dollars and forty six cents for 255 DMV stops since July 1st, 2022. How many, so, how many stops? All right, 255. 255. <laughs> this is for this current fiscal year. That's what I asked her for, right. from July to now. July. Uh, 255 stops have been done and they have collected $11,690.46. The $11,690 is back taxes technically right mm -hmm. there's a fee associated with that as well though isn't there there is yeah we, we put a twenty dollar fee on a long time ago yeah. is that included the twenty dollar fee is that included into that is, I would think. probably that number i don't know yeah that's okay that's okay i can find that out for you but that eleven thousand is from june or july first through now mm -hmm. through monday through Monday, so seven, eight, seven months, six months, a little over six and a half months, is that right? Do we know if any of those with the John Rife or is it all through the treasurer's office? Do we know that? Or do you know? Uh, Mr. Rife, I don't believe, does the he does do so. I thought they did, but they uh, did. Uh, he offered to do that, but. I was thinking, I saw what he was doing personal property on that thing we get. He does do personal property, but he doesn't do the DMV stops. They can do it, but they don't. That's what I'm thinking, personal property, I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm good. And um, hopefully there will be another tax sale the end of April. Um, when I met with Mitzi, she mentioned that, that she is trying to get them back to two per year. Uh, we went to one per year during COVID, but she's um, trying to get them to go back to two per year. So April would be the next one. Okay. And then one in the fall. Right. Fantastic. Thank you. You're welcome. And, uh, invest in some of the money. Uh, Steph, what was you telling me yesterday? Yes. Um, I've also, um, I've, in January, I went to Richmond twice. The first trip, um, I met with Davenport while I was there. And where we have the courthouse, smaller project, and the Daisy Compton building project. We were working on that, and um, they have proposed that we invest some of the money, um, not in the state pool, but more in a bank financing or a bank investing. Um, at, and right now, rates are about four percent. And if we could invest three million dollars, they're anticipating we could get one hundred forty-five thousand in interest for a year. So I've met with Mitzi about that too. Uh, Megan is working to get Davenport um, the needed history of bank statements that they need to help us um, get that investing going. So that more details on that, you know, I'll keep you updated as we move along. But we're just in the very beginning stages uh, of that process right now. Thank you. But that would help with our uh, debt service, you know, once we get the that project and stuff moving along. That was how much interest for you? They're estimating about 145000 That's equivalent to about one penny. In, no, say, what is one penny increase? Uh, probably about 165 now. So it's close to a penny increase. Uh, Three so. million might be a, a little more than we can take out to invest because that would be like for a year commitment. 
uh, we might not be able to go that far um, but that's why they will be reviewing those it's three years of bank statements they'll be seeing how our cash flows in and out to come up with a good recommendation number for us of what they feel like we can safely invest to get us through especially the fall and the tax season one year we did a revenue anticipation loan that we didn't use it we had it I don't know if that cost to do that it might be worth it if we did run short um, cash to, to do that like the, we need to see what the it's pretty expensive I'm thinking 40 to 50 thousand dollars to do that yeah because oh, you're wow. paying that up front I know we yeah, did it's, the school it's board. expensive yeah okay it might be worth it then to do that so anyway. I like the 145,000 number though yeah all right okay I think this is a positive move you know in in that realm um, I think you know we added another full-time employee to that position of the treasurer's office and I think it, what would really be helpful to our citizens is to, to, to be able to, to be able to see uh, the higher percentages uh, with the training I'm sure that she's gotten already uh, to be to be able to uh, capture the uh, real estate and personal property before they go they drop off I think that would really be a great help to our county. Um, I'm just not asking anything. I, I just think a lot of people are, are unaware of, um, you know, where we're, where we're at in terms of our taxes, and they always come back to us as the board, and uh, it's all team effort. You know all of the agencies in our county the sheriffs you know the commissioner of revenue the the treasurer support the supervisor and, and everybody so it, it's all about we the people so i just want to make that comment um, you know we added another you know we made the part-time a full-time employee so we expect, i'm speaking for myself and you guys can speak for yourself but i expect to see you know more that would be helpful you know to our county so all right, uh, for my comments, I do pre appreciate you all that went to Richmond. I've never felt, I, mean, I felt that those are always productive. Seeing like this time, Mr. Ricky and Marshall and, uh, and Fred and John, y'all went. I thought it was one of the most productive meeting trips we made as far as is getting some response back from the Attorney General to you know, the meeting with the, the folks at VDOT there. There's many people in Terry's office, it's hardly no place to sit, and most of them are VDOT people. And I was said that a while ago, but I thought it was very productive. It's expensive to send people for us to travel, but it's worth it. I think it's worth it to do that. So anyway, I thought it was very productive. Thank the staff. Y'all do a good job. Law enforcement, thank y'all for being here. Appreciate you, Huey, for being here. And so anyway, we do have three items to go into closed session for. Anything else before we do that? All right. We have three items, and we need a motion and a second. We have a motion. So moved. Ricky made a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. Mr. Tipton, second. On a motion by Mr. Bricky, second by Mr. Tipton, this board here buys into closed session. Pursuant to Virginia Code Section 2.2-3711-A1 personnel, being A7 legal, and then we got to consultation with legal. So it's three items we're going in for. All in favor, but we aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. So we'll be going to close session and we'll go to the EDA room. Could we take a break, Mr. Yeah. Chairman? Sure can. Take a break and then we'll go in there. Run the administrator in And consultation, please. Yeah, that one. No, because we did the opioid resolution. We were originally talking okay. about that. <laughs>